For most gardeners, the planting season is never really over. We always have some crops reaching their peak, getting ready for harvest. We'll be taking those out and then planting others. And this bed is a good example of that. We had cold crops in here all through spring and into the early summer. Most of them have been harvested. I have a few that even though they're riddled with insect holes, I still have a nice head of broccoli here about to harvest, and then up ahead of me, some red cabbage that has about another week to go before I'll be picking that. So I'm leaving those in place. The rest of the bed I've cleared out of the old cold crop plants. I've worked up the soil and I'm going to plant some vine crops. Now I started at the very end of this bed with the succession planting of summer greens. We've planted Swiss chard before on the show and we have one planting in another raised bed. I put in a second one so we'll have some of those tender greens to harvest and just in case the others get a little stressed in the heat or, or get some insect damage, we'll have a fresh crop coming along. Beside that and all around the edge of this bed, I've planted nasturtium flowers. In a few minutes, I'll give you some tips on how to have success with those seeds. Right now, I just finished planting a second planting of early yellow crookneck squash. I have one hill of those in another raised bed. I want to have a second one just in case the squash vine board takes the other planting. Now up ahead here, I'm going to put in a hill of spaghetti squash. Now spaghetti squash will ramble all over the place. It, it's truly a vining crop, and so I've got it right in the middle of this bed so it can grow either direction. With spaghetti squash, just like any vine crops, you want to sow the seed in a hill just four or five seeds and then thin those back to about two plants when they come up. And they love the warm weather that we're getting into. Now if you're not familiar with sp spaghetti squash, it's not too late to plant some. You might want to try this crop. It is what we consider a winter squash. It's harvested when the skin is very tough and can't be pierced with your thumbnail. It's delicious once it's cooked and you scrape out the interior tissue. It scrapes up just like spaghetti. It's a good alternative if you don't want the heaviness of pasta. Now a good summer squash that we don't have yet in the garden and I wanted to get some in is white bush scallop squash. It's also known as patty pan squash. And patty pan or scallop squash comes in three colors now. You can buy it in green varieties, there are yellow ones, there's one called sunburst that's a bright yellow. And this is just the plain white one. Now, a lot of people when they plant scallop squash have great success with it and they don't get out there to harvest the plants like they need to. Later this summer I'll show you some tips on that but let me just warn you that it will be ready before you know it and you want to pick those when they're about the diameter of a tennis ball. They're really small and tender. It is a summer squash. A lot of you let your scallop squashes get to be about lunch plate size and that's really too big and tough for them to be tasty. Again, we'll thin those to about two plants when they come up. Now up here around the bend, I have a site prepared for some nasturtiums. Now nasturtiums we usually find in the flower garden, but I like to mix them in with my vine crops. A lot of old timers believe that nasturtiums will help repel squash bugs. We'll try that here and see. Let me give you one tip on having success, success with sowing nasturtium seeds. They have a very, very tough seed coat. I'll just shake a few out here on the end and show you. It's a very, very hard seed, seed coat and a lot of times the nasturtiums are very slow about coming up. Well, one thing you can do is take a rat tail file like this or just a pocket knife and run the seed back and forth on that. And you can see right here the seed coat has been scraped away and you see a little bit of the seed tissue down in there. And what that does is gives an avenue for water to move in and for the plant to germinate more quickly, for the seed to germinate more quickly. Another thing you might do is to soak the seed overnight. You can do this in a glass of water or just in a mo moist paper towel. And these were soaked overnight and you can see that they're, they swelled up just a little bigger than the ones in the package. And I might gain a couple extra days 
on my germination time by using this method. It's a good method you could use on other seeds as well that are slow to come up. Okra is another one you might try it on. I'm going to finish up this planting of nasturtiums and then I want to give you some tips on how to compost the refuse from a big cold crop planting like this one.